what's been happening is that shale gas, due to changes in technology in the United States, has made a significant contribution to US domestic gas supplies. So in 2000 it made virtually no contribution. Uh, last year it was accounting for about 20% of the gas supplies in the United States. This gives rise then to two key questions. Can that be continued in the United States and is it possible that the shale gas revolution can be replicated in other parts of the world where there are significant resources of shale gas? Now, the answer to both of those questions is rather uncertain. Um, there are problems in the United States because there's concern over the environmental damage that may come from one of the new technologies being used, which is hydraulic fracturing. Uh, if you look at other parts of the world, if you look at the conditions in the United States that made this happen, in other parts of the world, particularly Western Europe, those conditions are not necessarily present. So, for example, uh, shale gas is very intrusive on local communities. In the United States, you have a lot of space and few people. In Western Europe, you've got little space and a lot of people. Uh, there's also differences in the property rights, uh, so that if you're in the United States and you have a shale gas under your land, you don't mind the disruption because you're going to get paid for the gas. In Europe, the gas belongs to the state, so so you would get no benefit from the disruption. Now the problem that arises here is that we don't know the answer to those questions and this is creating very large investor uncertainty uh, in the context of investment in conventional gas but also investment in renewables. If the shale gas revolution continues in the United States and if it becomes global, then that means we can look forward to, to floating on a sea of cheap gas for a long, long time to come. But if it turns out that it's not going to be like that, then the problem we have is gas demand is certainly going to increase, which means that 5, 10, 15 years down the road, people are going to be asking the question, where is the gas going to come from? And why didn't we make those investments five or ten years ago? Because the industry is characterised by very long lead times. And so this investor uncertainty could lead us into, you might almost call it a false sense of security, saying, oh, we don't have to worry about gas supplies, shale gas will come to the rescue. And it may well turn out that this is not the case. Shale gas is part of the, the general unconventional gas, which also includes coal bed, methane and type gas. Essentially, it's gas that is trapped in inside rock. So in other words, if you simply drill a well, the gas will not flow. You have to do something else, and that something else is called hydraulic fracturing, which is putting down water and chemicals at very high pressure to break up the rock formation so the gas will flow.